Hello everyone, Jeremy here again with another iFly preview video. Today I'm going to show you a part of the feature pack that is up and coming, and that is IAN, or Integrated Approach Navigation. Those of you who have seen my previous videos might have noted RNP is now simulated in the iFly, and additionally added to this was IAN capabilities. Today we're going to be flying into Nashville and we'll be doing the RNAV GPS to runway 13 which by the way does not have a localizer or glide slope station so it will be full uh, IAN calculated by the FMC. Now we'll show you one of the nice things about the feature pack that has been added. You can see the names of the approaches now come up instead of all those funky numbers and letters and we have active currently the RNAV to runway 13 in the FMC go to the approach page you see there is no glide slope reference because it does not have a glide slope transmitter we are at 37,000 feet now getting ready to descend so I will return the video once we get ready to join the initial approach fix at teach and you can see how IAN functions well in the iFly okay so here we are we are descending out of 10,000 now along the calculated VNAV path we are direct to our initial approach fix of teach for the RNAV GPS to runway 13 at Nashville our minimums are set 970 feet barometer our approach speed today will be 129 knots with a flap 30 and auto brake 2. Just to give you a little background, I'm using uh, the iFly Home Cockpit Pro Edition. However, this is just for my use because this is the software that I use. If you use FS9, or if you use just the regular FSX version all this that I'm showing you today will be included with their respective feature packs so this is just not something that is for the pro version only or FSX only no this is for all three platforms FS9 users don't worry they have not forgotten about you as they have not done so yet and of course the feature pack will be 100 percent completely free it will not raise the price of the iFly uh, aircraft itself and uh, you get a let me tell you a, a ton of great features I mean I've I'm still finding different things with this feature pack but uh, I can't show those to you right now I just wanted to show you uh, IAN because again I think it's one of the biggest parts to the uh, to the feature pack so we've reached our initial approach fix and we are going to start beginning the approach into Nashville uh, pull up the data here you can see our next waypoint is a 3100 foot or above crossing restriction According to the FCOM, you're not supposed to uh, run IAN if you mess with these altitude restrictions. So, I mean, if you really want to mess with these altitude restrictions, you can. But if you want to be ultra realistic, then don't mess with those altitude restrictions that come with it. Or else you could mess up your glide path. We're already uh, on a pretty nice glide path of anywhere between 700 to 900 feet per minute. I'm doing 200 knots so as you can see the calculated glide path and we're shoot a good uh, good 20 miles so make it 30 miles out from Nashville and we're already established on a 900 foot per minute or less glide path and there you go you can see that the FMC annunciation has just come up which means the FMC calculated glide path not glide slope glide path because there is no glide slope and the final approach course has been activated the final approach course is not in uh, solid magenta because we are not on the final approach course yet 
Once we hit uh, the Jara's waypoint, that's when we will be on final approach for runway 13. But as you can see, the uh, standard ILS or, or ILS like uh, deviation scales have come up as they should. The uh, RNAV point for runway uh, 13. I don't know why it says 3-1, it should be 1-3. Maybe that's something different, something wrong with the... I don't know, it says runway 1-3. Okay, well, it's indicating we're 20 miles from the runway itself. We're going to go ahead and activate the approach mode. We're going to arm it. So we are armed. You see FAC has finally engaged. As we are now on final approach course, glide path is in arm as we have not intercepted the glide path yet. Single channel is activated as this is a CAT-1 approach only. You should not, I mean I say should because it's a simulation, you could do whatever you want, but you should not conduct an auto land. And normally on these IAN approaches, you would disengage the autopilot at the MDA, minimum descent altitude and this one's minimum descent altitude is 968 feet but we will not be disengaging the autopilot at 968 feet because I want to show you another feature that iFly has thrown in here and it's actually an airline option that uh, will automatically disengage the autopilot at 50 feet radar altimeter or radar altitude so once you get 50 feet above the ground, if you have not disengaged the autopilot, the aircraft will do it for you. And I think that's a pretty neat feature because it gives you a aureal and visual warning on the PFD that the autopilot is still engaged and is about to be disconnected. And then of course you have to hand fly yourself, which I love hand flying on my approaches. It saddens me that I have to do this by autopilot, but if I don't do it by autopilot, I can't show you what actually happens. We're going to go ahead and reduce our speed a bit. We're already at flaps one, so we'll bring the speed down to reflect flaps one minimum speed. I have to kick out the uh, spoilers a bit. Now we'll go ahead and kick those out real quick. We had a little bit of a tailwind coming through the descent of the arrival, so it's kind of still got all that energy built up. Just slow this baby down. Okay, I think we're good for flaps five. Increase our drag a bit, and there we go. Slowly reduce the spoilers, and bring them back to arm status. Reduce speed now to 170. Now, as an air traffic controller, I can tell you uh, standard speeds, at least at major airports, um, are what I'm flying about right now. I was doing about 210 till about anywhere between 12 to 14 mile final and then you want to start breaking down to about anywhere between 170 and 180 and you want to be doing those speeds up until you hit the marker or usually about five miles from the runway then that's when you want to start uh, getting dirty um, you don't want to be dirty you know this far out because you could uh, potentially uh, cause a bad domino effect with the aircraft behind you because they're usually doing about a buck eighty, a buck seventy behind. And again, this is just from an air traffic controller standpoint. I'm not an actual pilot. I just tell pilots what to do, and that makes me happy. Okay, so we've hit 2,500 feet. The artificial rising runway has appeared just as if it would an ILS approach. And we're hitting five miles, so we'll go ahead and reduce to flaps five minimum speed. Pull out flaps ten. 
and we'll bring the gear down. Give you a quick look outside. What's happening? The airport is in sight. Flaps 15. Continue to reduce the speed. We're four miles out now. Almost about to hit the final fix of the approach. Flaps 25. And we'll bring speed down finally to hit flaps 30. And our approach speed of 134 knots with the 5 knot wind correction. We've now hit a thousand feet and I'm going to grab yoke here. Excuse me while this landing is going to be horrible because it's very difficult to land an airplane manually and hold this digital camcorder that I have Coming up on 700 feet. And again, this is all computer, this is all FMC generated glide path. No ILS system whatsoever. We've hit minimums, so we would normally disengage the autopilot now. But again, we're not going to do that. So you can see the auto disengage. At 100 feet, AGL is when we will get the warning on the PFD. There it is, that the autopilot is engaged. And at 50 feet, you'll see Command A goes out. And we are now hand flying the airplane down to the approach. And I gotta disengage the auto throttle. There we go. And we're down. Again, not my best, but I'm using one hand to not only put the airplane on the ground, but <laughs> reduce the throttles as well. So, there you go. There's integrated approach navigation for uh, all of you non-precision approach buffs like me. I enjoy flying non-precision approaches because they're just so much more fun. And uh, especially RMP approaches into rough terrain. Those are even better. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, I can't wait to... Uh, See everybody with this feature pack. You're going to enjoy it. Take care.